Welcome to Measure Theory Class 5, Probability Theory Part 1. Part 1 is on probability spaces, which is a special kind of measure space. Here's the measure space from previous measure theory videos. Once you start talking about probability spaces, there are specific, specific names to the three parts. The outcome set what we were calling the original set in the measure theory videos, in probability theory, we will call this the outcome set, and we will represent it with the Greek letter omega. The elements in this set are called outcomes and are represented with little omegas. One way we can use probability theory in applied research is to model the data generating process which is simply the actions taken by the researcher to obtain the data that was collected. This is useful for so many reasons, and I will talk about that in a future video. So for now, the outcome set includes all the possible outcomes you could get from a data generating process. So what are all the possible outcomes? All the possible outcomes represent the population of interest. So if you want to get information about the blood pressure of all the vegans in the world, you're going to have to get a hold of all the vegans in the world. You may only be able to get a hold of some of them, but all of them are your possible outcomes. They are all part of your population of interest. So the event set. We will call the sigma algebra on the outcome set the event set. Here it's represented with the same italicized A that we used in the measure theory videos and the elements in the event set are called events. The event set will allow you to categorize the outcomes in whatever manner you want to use them, use to define them. It represents the events to which you can assign a measure. It is particularly useful for the event set to be the power set of the outcome set because that allows you to assign a measure for every possible subset of the outcome set. And we are really actually very interested in the outcome set and assigning measures to particular subsets of the outcome set that we want to know something about. And the measure. The measure of a probability space is a probability measure and what is what differentiates um, a measure space from a probability space. I want to point out that the meaning of this probability space as a whole comes from your interpretation of it as a model of something that you are interested in. Probability spaces are used by researchers to, for example, model uncertainty associated with the data generating process, in which case the probability measure is the probability that the data generating process will produce a given event. Now let's talk about how a probability measure differs from a measure. It's not just that now we represent the probability measure with the letter P, it is because the probability measure on the outcome set is always equal to 1. This here is an outcome set. And this measure assigns 1 to the outcome set. Thus, this is a probability measure and this is a probability space. We will write it like this with a P for the measure. And remember from class 2, the rules of creating a sigma algebra, the outcome set is an element in the event set. Another way to say that is the outcome set is an event in the event set. So if the probability measure on the outcome space is always equal to 1, then the sum of the probability measures on each of the elements these happy smiling faces in the outcome set is equal to 1. So if you sum each of these, the probability measure on each of these little outcomes, that will equal 1. But actually, more appropriately, when the probability measure is applied to each of the unit sets in the event set, it will always equal 1. P 
P can be the sampling probabilities of the individual's little omega in the population. Sampling probabilities because we can use the probability space to inform us about the data generating process. In other words, there is a sampling probability for each element in the outcome set. If you add these up, they equal 1. You're adding the probability measure on each of these unit events, and together they sum to 1. This sampling probability reflects the data generating process. But the event set has more than just unit sets in it. So really we're saying that the sum of the probability measures on all the events that would together form a partition of the outcome set equals 1. So a partition is just a group of disjoint, no overlap, um, sets that together capture all of the elements in a set. So here we can see that this is a partition. Say these red lines demarcate um, different subsets. You can see here that there's no overlap between these subsets and yet each of these subsets do capture all of the elements in the set. So this would be a partition. Here, this is not a partition. So you have some subsets. There's no overlap, but not all of the elements, for example, these elements, are not um, captured in a partition um, or in a subset. So these subsets do not partition this set. Here, all of the elements are captured in a subset, but there's overlap. So these subsets do not partition the set. So what, you, what you'll find is if you get um, a partition like this, if you take this subset and add it to this subset and this one and add it to this subset and add it to that subset, then you'll get um, the you'll add the measures of all of the probability measures will all add up to 1. So the sum of the probability measure on all the sets that partition an outcome set equals 1. Modeling the data generating process is the most common use for specifying a probability space in applied research. So let's start with a fun example of two different data generating process. The first data generating process is an equal probability sample. Here you have your population of interest, in this case, a bunch of people at a park, and each person has an equal probability of being selected for your study. There could be several st strategies for doing this, but the result of any of the strategies is that any person in your population of interest is as likely as any other person to be selected for your study. One strategy could be to have a random name generator to randomly display the names of the people in the park. Maybe they had to sign in to a visitor center and that's how you have all of their names. The random name generator pulls up the name Isabel and so you go out and find her and ask her to fill out your survey. The second data generating process is an unequal probability sample. In this case, whatever strategy is employed, some of the people in the park will have a higher probability of being selected for your study than others. One such strategy is if you were to run into the park and start yelling out, I have a survey, please answer my questions. Anyone want to answer my questions? The faster runners will have a low probability of being in your study as they run away from you, and the slower runners will have a higher probability of being in your study because they can't run away from you as fast. And they're too polite once you catch them, so they go ahead and answer your questions. Let's do a healthcare example of equal probability sampling. This is an assisted living facility. There are 15 residents in this facility. This is our outcome set. Each patient is an element in the outcome set, so each patient is an outcome. Say we want to get a sample of patients to fill out information on their satisfaction. 
Our strategy again is to use a random name generator. And all of the residents are so sweet and nice, and no one would ever refuse to answer your questions, so there are no obstacles to interviewing any of them. So here we have an equal probability of getting any one of the patients. Then for each patient, the probability measure P equals 1 over 15. So for all equal probability samples, each element in the outcome set has the same probability measure, which equals 2 1 over the sample size, which really means that each unit set in the event set has the same probability measure, 1 over n. But say instead that this is a psychiatric facility. And in this facility, there are different rules. The random name generator will only get you so far. There are obstacles to getting to some of the patients and even obstacles to avoiding some of the patients. As you might suspect, this would not create an equal probability sample. It would be unequal. Say, for example, some of the patients were simply off limits to you out of concern for your safety. The probability of getting these patients is equal to zero. Also, some of the patients are very shy, but you do have some chance of talking to them. The probability of getting these patients is equal to 1 over 30. And some of the patients see you and they're so excited to talk to you and they run up to you and it's, it's impossible to get away from them. The probability of getting these patients is equal to 1 over 5, 1 fifth. So you talk to them and they say they want to be in your survey and if you say no, they start to cry so you have to put them in your study. And some of the patients are just ambling about. They're neither shy nor forward. And the probability of getting these patients is equal to 1 over 15 or 1 15th. Then for each patient in the psych ward, the probability measure P will be different. But in either case, for the equal probability sample or for the unequal probability sample, the probability measure for all the elements in the outcome set added together equals 1. See all these fractions add up to 1. You can check them yourself. So we just looked at the outcomes in the outcome set which shows up as unit sets in the event set. We can also look at the other events in the event set those that contain subsets of elements from the outcome set. How will we know their probability measures? By summing the unit sets that they contain, because that is a property of measures in general. Let's go back to the assisted living facility. This slide depicts where the patient, patients sleep, the first, second, and third floors. What is the probability of being a first floor dwelling patient? Let's say this subset of the outcome set is an element in the event set and can be assigned a number by the probability measure. And equals the sum of the individual probabilities. So what is the probability of getting a first floor dwelling resident? It is 5 fifteenths or 1 third. What is the probability of getting a lavender patient? There are four lavender patients, so it's 4 fifteenths. Now you are in the psych ward. Again, the rows are where the patients sleep. What is the probability of being a first floor dwelling patient? It is the sum of the individual probabilities. 1 fifth plus 0 plus 1 thirtieth plus 1 fifteenth plus 1 30th, which equals 5 fifteenths. So the probability of getting someone who sleeps on the flo first floor is 5 fifteenths. What is the probability of being a forward patient? The sum of the individual probabilities, 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth, which is 3 fifths or 9 fifteenths. 
So those are the basics of applying a probability measure to a probability space. Next video, we will talk about conditional probability and independence. And let me know if you have any questions or criticisms. Thank you very much for watching this video.